Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today I have a tag for you. I was not going to do this as a tag, but then Angelica Nukvist created a tag and I was like, this is perfect for the video that I wanted to pl uh, that I wanted to film about like my review of 2019 and what I felt about some of the releases that we had this year, but also looking ahead to 2020. Um, the tag itself is only seven questions, so I think I can get through it quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is first answer the questions, but I sort of want to tag something differently on at the end. So once I've answered all the questions, I will also be telling you a little bit about some of the things that I hope to try in 2020. I did that in a separate video last year, I believe, and today I just want to sort of lump it all together, 2019 in review, and 2020 looking ahead to that. I am going to do, uh, starting hopefully next week, sort of like my end of the year series where I sort of like pick my top 10 base products and my top 10 eyeshadow palettes and like that's coming too, don't worry. But today I just wanted to have a fun chatty video. It's a very gray, rainy, windy day today so I've got my nice cozy sweater on. The Christmas tree is here so I thought we could have a fun chat about, well, what I thought of the makeup releases this year and what's to come. So let's get to the tag questions first. And the first question in this tag is what mainstream release lived up to the hype most this year? So according to me, like I, I do have to say that I'm more in tune with what's released mainstream. I believe, uh, I feel ra uh, compared to like indie releases. Um, so I have a couple of things here that I really liked. I made my very first Jeffree Star purchase this year, and that was the Blue Blood palette. So I'm not sure whether I would have to put him with indie or mainstream, but I feel he's quite mainstream because he has so many followers. Um, and I think that Blue Blood, like that was the first release by him that really sort of had me going like, ooh, I need that. And before that, like I'd always been like, yeah, it looks nice, but I no, there's other things like that. And with the Blue Blood, I've that was the first time I felt like it was something that I wanted to get. So that's why that is one of the standout releases for me in 2019. Naked Honey by Urban Decay. I know not everybody likes Urban Decay, but I still have a soft spot for the brand, even though they've gotten a little bit bo boring and safe. But I feel that with the Naked Honey, they are definitely offering something new to what a nude can be. And that's what I really appreciate about that palette. So that's why I wanted to feature it here. I don't think it's gotten a lot of hype. I think it deserves a bit more hype, actually, which is why I wanted to mention it here. But I think the mainstream release, for me at least, is the Huda Beauty Nude Obsessions little palettes. I bought two of them myself. And I think that, again, in terms of redoing a nude, I think that Huda Beauty is definitely onto something there, and I think a lot of people like these little palettes. They're very nice and curated. It's got nudes for different skin tones, but even if you're not that skin tone, you could still make them work. I think it's genius. <laughs> so uh, that's why I wanted to mention that one too. The second question then, uh, what indie release lift up to the hype most this year? Without fail, I, I don't want to sound like I'm copying what Angelica said, but like her, I can only name one thing, which is the Cleona stain stained glass multi-chrome collection that they did. I picked up a few bits from that collection myself over the summertime, and oh my, the hype is so real. It sells out so quickly. I read on Instagram that they're slated to do a full restock and a sale after Christmas, and I've added a couple of other things to my wish list. Not that I intend to buy them anytime soon because these things are pricey, but they are definitely worth the price point. Um, also in terms of like getting things over here with shipping and all that, the customer service was amazing because they don't offer track shipping to the Netherlands like standard. You need to request it. So I requested that they looked into it. The replies were super quick and easy. Ugh. They're super nice on Instagram too. Like Cleona stained glass in terms of indie makeup was the thing I didn't see coming that I think is totally worth it. Like totally worth the hype, totally worth waiting out for, but make sure you set an alarm clock when it restocks because 
they go quickly. Question number three, and this may be a bit of a surprise, which releases did not live up to the hype? Can you guess? For me, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, Conspiracy Pal, th that whole collection. Like, there was so much hype created with the entire series that they created, of course, but then the palette was released, like the first pictures leaked, and I was like, huh? No, I don't like that color story. It's a weird mishmash of like neutrals in the top and then these like really bright warm tone shades in the middle. And the, the only row that I would be interested in in the entire large palette is that bottom row with like Illuminati and there's this like gun metal shade. Those speak my name. But like two thirds of that palette no! And the same with the mini, the mini palette that they did. Really lovely concept. The packaging on that looks gorgeous. But the color story is just absolutely boring. Why are there two blues in a nine pan palette? Like, I'm glad that they're gonna add that green now. I might then be interested in that mini palette, but it won't restock until March. And by that time, everybody will be over it. If I perhaps saw this in real life, again, like I say this a lot, but sometimes when you see things in real life, you might go like, ooh, yeah, that is pretty. But from what I've seen, like swatches and pictures, it's just not a color story that entices me enough to buy it. It just doesn't. So for me, the hype that was created through, like you got to follow the entire making off process. So everybody was like super stoked for this. And then I saw it and I was like, huh? I mean, in terms of sales, they pretty much broke the internet. So it, they definitely lived up to the hype in that sense. But to me, it's just not something I was interested in. What was the biggest curveball? That would be question number four. Um, and this is going to be one that I know is a Marmite answer, but tarts, high tides, and good vibes. I should have brought it up here. I forgot. But uh, it's the tart palette that they did, I think for spring, but it may be permanent because it was still in the tart line like by fall time, so it wasn't discontinued. Could also be that it's limited until stocks last. I'm not sure how it works. It's got a really cute turtle on the front. It does have quite hefty, bulky packaging. Um, I think it looks really cute and that it really makes the palette a bit more special, but some people think it's a bit too bulky for what it is. And it's a palette where you get a couple of neutrals and then some brighter pops of color. And then it has a full diagonal row of four glitters, like pressed glitters. And I'm not a huge fan of pressed glitters, but these pressed glitters I was able to work with really well with a glitter glue. They stay put all day. And what I like about these glitters is that they are very wearable for work. Very often I find glitters like, yeah, it's fun, but it's only fun for a party. Like the Stila glitter and glows, I love those, but it's very obvious that you're wearing a glitter, you know, and to start teaching with a glitter, don't think so. But for instance, I did a very easy uh, pinky look with some of the pink tones that are in the palette. And then I put the pink tone glitter all over my lid and it was absolutely stunning and I wore it to work and no one went like, huh, are you wearing glitter to work? Is it Christmas? Like what's going on? So I feel that the glitters work really well with the shades that are in the palette, which makes it a lot wearable. And because they are pressed, all you need is your finger. You can just like smudge it on, tap it on top of a glitter primer and it will stay put all day. I loved it. I felt the blendability of that palette was great. You get the neutral so you can ground a look, but you do get the fun pinks and blues in there too. It has a gorgeous minty shade too. I felt it was a perfect spring palette and it's definitely one that sort of takes all the good things about Tarte and sort of amps it up a notch. So to me, this was the thing I hadn't expected to like. I saw it, didn't think I could pick it up. Then I spotted it when I was in Paris and I was like swatching it in the store. I was like, why, why didn't this palette get more hype? I don't get it. And so many people are hating on that palette and I absolutely love it. <laughs> oh, so yeah, the, that, that just goes to show we all have different makeup tastes, right? Uh, question number five, what was the biggest letdown or snooze fest of this year? Um, and I, I have question marks here, like I really thought about some of the answers, but then I was like, well, 
in terms of letdown, I think Jaclyn Hill lipsticks, I, every, that fiasco, like, I'm not a Jaclyn Hill fan. I don't follow her at all. So I didn't even know she was releasing lipsticks, you guys. I didn't know she was coming out with her own makeup line until those videos started to pop up online. And I was like, okay, so this is just absolutely atrocious. And then everybody had to say something about it. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> And in terms of snooze fest, was there anything that I really thought was just one big yawn? Maybe, maybe Urban Decay reloaded. Because of course last year the Naked was re like discontinued and then they came out with the reloaded in March and it definitely didn't get the traction I think Urban Decay had hoped it would. Uh, and also for me, it's like one of the things that I, I definitely didn't buy the minute it came out. I wanted to get it because it's Urban Decay and because I like naked palettes, but to be quite honest, I bought it and then I, I like spring happened and I wanted to wear color and I had all these fun indie palettes to play with and trying to get more creative and then I was playing around with color pop singles and I was playing around with my custom blue, green, purple palette and it just got a little snowed under for me. <laughs> so that's, that's why I think it's a snooze fest. I, I just didn't think it stood out enough. Um, I think that counts as well. And then number six, what was the best holiday release this year? Well, I definitely have to give this a good think because none, <laughs> none of the um, Christmas releases this year really stood out to me. Oh, in the previous question, I could have mentioned Too Faced Gingerbread Extra Spicy. That was a boring palette release. Dude, oh my, that, that, ooh, yeah, if, if, uh, most underwhelming Christmas release, Too Faced, <laughs> definitely. Um, but I, I happened to pick up one thing, <laughs> and that was the Pat McGrath Blit, Blist, Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. And I have to say, those Pat McGrath larger palettes, they look really pretty but they're 129 euros. And when I like look at the color stories online for a palette that expensive, I just thought it wasn't very unique, save for those four shades she always tags on at the like far end of the palette. And these quads have those special shades. So I was like, I need to get myself some. So I bought Nocturnal Nirvana, which has a gold, a blue, a really stunning duochrome green and a purple. I wore them. I still have to figure out a little bit how to make them last on my eyes because they are stunning, but they are, because of that special texture, a little bit difficult to work with. But I'm currently still lusting after that rose one that they came out with. So yeah, in terms of Christmas releases this year, I think Pat McGrath is the best one so far. And then seven is our looking ahead question. So what are your predictions for releases during the next year? And I'm just really bad at predictions, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, I cannot tell you what will be a hype next year. I can only tell you what I hope, or what I think we'll see. And what I hope we'll see a lot more of in 2020 is cool-toned eyeshadow palettes. Please, makeup brands, come out with good, true cool-toned eyeshadow palettes that go beyond 15 shades of taupe. Can we, can we please do it? Because cool tones are more than grays and taupes. Like I'm missing like really good cool tone browns and like perhaps different shades of purple and like different shades of blue and green. Like it's why I ended up building my own blue, green, purple palette because it's just, it's not there. Um, so that is definitely something that I hope more brands will play around with is to also cater to different undertones and not just warm tones. Um, the second thing that I definitely uh, am seeing, because 2019 was the year of the multi-chrome in the world of indie, so I'm pretty sure that some mainstream brands are going to pick up on this. I think that indie makeup is where the pressed glitter trend got started, which every mainstream brand now seems to be doing in their palettes, so I'm pretty sure that duochromes and multi-chromes are going to be more standard in more major mainstream brands because that's usually how it goes. Indie starts doing something, it's a niche thing, then it ends up being popular, Cleona stained glass, and then Too Faced decides like, oh, I wanna hop on that bandwagon or 
Huda Beauty or Urban Decay or whichever brand you can think of. So that is definitely something here. Thirdly, if we see multi-chrome eyeshadows, I'm pretty sure that the multi-chrome trend is also going to like get like seep into other areas of makeup. So I think we're going to see multi-chrome lip products like like a liquid lipstick or like a lip gloss that is super intense and makes your lips look like beetles. I think that will happen. I don't think it, like I hope it won't because it's not something I would wear, but I'm pretty sure that the Instagram bandwagon is going to hop onto something like that. In terms of like face stuff, like I don't talk a lot about foundation on my channel and things like that, but I really think that with the release of the ABH Luminous Foundation and the Fenty Hydrating Foundation, ColourPop now doing a tinted moisturizer as well, I think we're going to see like more releases with like base products like primers and foundations and concealers and powders that aim to more hydrate and make the skin more dewy rather than this like super matte look. I think that that's going to continue. Um, tapping into like more like things like Glossier and things like that as well. This one more natural glowy lit from within thing and then especially base products that are more hydrating rather than mattifying I think is definitely going to be more of a thing next year. And then I've heard I think it was An uh, Angelica as well who said that textured eyeshadow would be a thing and I think that that's going to be a trend as well like where like the Tati palette will get different textures, like a variety of textures within a palette, and that it's not just a matte, a satin, and a metallic, you know? But that we get a little bit more variety within palettes. And then to sort of round off this video, what I would like to include, which is not part of the tag, is my wish list for 2020. So I make a wish list every year of like makeup-y goals that I have for 2020. In 2018, it was to try more color, and to teach myself how to do a cut crease and a halo eye. Yes, yeah, sometimes these like wish list things can not just be things I want to buy, but it's more like things I want to try, you could say. And then in 20, uh, 2019, I wanted to try more indie makeup, and that's definitely something I started doing. I tried Certify, I tried Blush Tribe, I tried Misha Lu, I tried uh, Cleona, I tried Davina, I tried Luxi. Um, so yeah, indie was definitely a thing, and I think I'm going to sort of continue on in that same vein. If no brand <laughs> starts doing good cool tone palettes, I think I will just start making my own. So I think that apart from the blue-green purple palette I already own, I think I would like to get myself like a similar size palette, but then with cool tone. So like a couple of good taupes, a couple of good cool, uh, cool tone browns, and all that jazz. So I definitely want to first see what I have in my collection because I know I have a couple of stunning cool tones that are now living in like different palettes. So I may want to cobble that together first and then see what gaps I have to see how I can fill them up. But if I do see gaps that I would like to fill, I know I'm going to fill it with Sydney Grays because Sydney Gray shadows are amazing. They are like my new, <laughs> my new like holy grail when it comes to eyeshadow formula. So I definitely want to try some more by them. So if I go and build myself a custom eyeshadow palette, then there's definitely going to be some more Sydney Grace involved. But I also want to try some other indie brands this next year that are mainly focused on singles as well, which is Terra Moon Cosmetics, Love Lux Beauty, and Touch of Glam. Maybe Give Me Glow, but currently their shipping is like 35 euros to Europe, which is just outrageously expensive. So that's why I have never bought from them because it instantly doubles the um, like the price you have to pay and then you need, still need to pay for shipping. So Terra Moon, Love Lux, and Touch of Glam are three brands that have been following on Instagram for a while now and they seem to do very pretty things. Uh, mainstream brands I'd like to try, I already mentioned it in another video, but Bare Minerals is finally now available here in the Netherlands. So I definitely want to see if I can find them in store somewhere. Um, it will probably be available in like one store in all of the Netherlands, but at least I can swatch some things and maybe make a wish list. I want to try more e.l.f. Um, I already mentioned that I did pick up some e.l.f. products. It is now more widely available over here. So I definitely want to try and like do a full face of e.l.f. 
And I also would like to try some Laura Mercier because I don't think I've ever tried anything apart from that setting powder that I used that I used for a video over the summertime. Again, we have a Laura Mercier counter here. So maybe I should just, you know, go and swatch a couple of things and see if they have anything that interests me. It's like one of those brands that I feel like people have their staples and then they sort of stick to that. But I, I've never really been intrigued by that brand. So maybe I should just check out the counter a bit and sort of see if they have anything that interests me. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, that that's a very big maybe and i also would like to try some more korean slash asian makeup i and maybe also skincare um i've now like i'm pretty good like with like my western stuff and someone left a comment the other day saying yeah i think i wish more people would talk about like uh like asian brands and korean brands and i'm like yeah yeah that's a good point and Every single time where I've like traveled, very often I had access to Korean and Asian makeup, but it was always quite expensive, I felt. And um, so it, it would definitely take a bit of time, perhaps, but I've been checking out YesStyle lately, and they seem to be shipping to the Netherlands. And so maybe I should just try a couple of things from there. Let me know in a comment down below if there's anything you would like to see me do. Um, I believe everyone is tagged in this tag, um, so if you would like to do this tag on your channel, then by all means make sure it goes round. Um, I'll make sure to put the questions in the description box. It is called the new makeup releases tag by Angelica Nukvis. So all credit goes to her, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I've got three videos a week, so uh, there's lots more content coming your way. And in December, I'm definitely going to have a little bit of fun and have a bit of a theme for the last couple of videos of the year where I talk about all of my favorites of the year. And I definitely still hope I can do a Black Friday haul within 2019. That would be lovely. So please stay tuned and I hope you have a great day. Bye.